There's so much information out there when it comes to cooking oils that I want to make a quick video about what is healthy to cook in and what isn't, and why otherwise healthy oils like olive oil become so unhealthy when they're heated. But to start with, I just want to say I've never seen a spray oil that is actually healthy. Most of them are filled with GMOs and a lot of other bad ingredients, but even the ones that are organic and marked as healthy have preservatives as well as propellants in them because that's what gets the oil out of the can. Now these are not only unhealthy for you to consume, they're unhealthy for you to breathe in and they're terrible for the environment. If you really need a spray bottle, I found a pump one that is not bad and I'll include a link for that in the blog. Now just like food gets mold, oil gets rancid. You would never eat food that either smelled or had mold on it, but eating oil that is rancid is actually worse than that but it's just harder to tell and it's often masked. There are four things that make an oil rancid. That's air, light, heat, and time. In this video, we're gonna talk about heat. So every oil, once it's heated to a certain point, begins to smoke, and then the oil becomes rancid. It's called the smoke point. So when you're choosing a cooking oil, it's not only important to get a high smoke point, but it's important to get one with a good fatty acid profile, a good omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, as well as antioxidants and nutrients in it. If you cook in an oil without a good ratio or a low smoke point, it can make an otherwise healthy oil toxic to your system. So let's take olive oil, for example. All oils have a different smoke point. Olive oils is very low. So even just heating it a little bit will make it rancid and oxidized, then having free radicals in it. Then once this is in your system, it will get clogged up in your liver. It will cause high cholesterol, inflammation, oxidation, premature aging and other skin problems, clogged arteries, and so much more. So many of our health and digestive problems, including food allergies, exist today because vegetable oils were introduced commercially as the oil to cook in 30 years ago. But I talk more about that in part two. But to get to what oils are good to cook in, it's important to understand that eating fat is healthy for you. And so many books point this out, like Eat Fat, Lose Fat, Nourishing Traditions, as well as the gut and psychology syndrome diet known as GAPS. But for more on that, see my blog on the benefits of saturated fats. So when it comes to cooking oils, you have two choices, plant-based or animal-based. We're gonna start with the animal base. So to begin with, we have lard. Lard is from pig fat, which is actually very healthy for you to cook in. But the problem is it's very difficult in this country to find a pig farm that has pasture-raised pigs as well as fed organically. So that pretty much eliminates lard. If you can get those, great, get that and cook in it. The farm will probably give it to you for free, if not very inexpensively. Next, we have chicken fat, which is also very good. The problem is it's high in polyunsaturated fats, which is fine by itself, but if you're eating any other processed foods, those are also high in polyunsaturated fats, and then you'll have too much of a combination of those. Now, I'm talking about processed foods like crackers, cookies, pastas, breads, even the healthy kind are high in polyunsaturated fats. So when you eat too many of these, your cell wall begins to mimic these and then they become oxidized and then damaged. This can lead to chronic inflammation in your body and a myriad of other health issues. So the real message here is not to stop eating chicken fat, but to stop eating processed foods and then you could have all the chicken fat that you want and it's because it's a great healthy oil to cook in. Next we have tallow, which is beef fat, and this is a great oil to cook in, probably the best one of the four mentioned, and you can get this very inexpensively at a butcher or a farmer. Make sure that you're getting either grass-fed or pasture-raised and organic, because if not, you're then taking the brunt of the hormones, antibiotics, GMOs, and pesticides that have been given to the cow. Next we have ghee, which is clarified butter. Ghee I'm a huge fan of, especially for cooking, its smoke point is almost as high as tallow, and it contains ALA and CLA, which can promote healthy weight loss. It also contains healthy short-chain fatty acids and a high heat threshold. So always stick to organic when it comes to buying ghee and go with 100% pure with no vegetable oils or anything else like that added. And finally, we have butter, which is also great to cook in, has almost as high a smoke point as ghee, and you always wanna stick with grass-fed, or pasture-raised if you can get it, and unpasteurized if you can get that as well, and always organic. So as far as animal fats, that leaves us with tallow, ghee, and butter, all which are great to cook in. The lard and chicken fat is also good if you can get those under the right circumstances as mentioned. 
Now in part two, I talk about plant-based oils that I like to cook in, and I do a mixture of both. Sometimes the animal-based oils like ghee or tallow, and I also use a couple of plant-based oils, and I'll talk about all those in part two. So subscribe for more health videos and recipes, as well as a connection of mind, body, and spirit. Good luck with this.